Hey chatters, we're here today to start our coding journey, or as I'm calling it, Joe Coding, because at least as of recording this, I have no idea how to actually code, uh, but we're going to figure out how to use large language models to get us most of the way there. So the first thing we need to do is learn about GitHub. Uh, this is GitHub. You just want to go to github.com. Just take a second to go do that if you don't already have uh, an account should bring you to this page right here. And we're just gonna wanna do sign up. So I'm not actually gonna sign up, but I like this little page here for the sign up. So we're gonna wait here just for a second. You wanna think of GitHub as the coder's Google Drive, but you know, for the world, this is a place where people host their code or, or anything really. It can even just be like a bunch of links or, or something like that. And it's just a great place to find code from other people. Especially if you're like me and you haven't done any coding, chances are someone else has already started doing what you want to do, or there's different components all over the place where people have already done the parts of what you want to do, and then you can bring that all together. So the idea here is you're going to have your own GitHub where you're going to host whatever you want to host. It could be code, it could be your prompts, it could just be links to things, uh, and it's very sharing friendly. The idea here is it also helps in terms of versioning control. So this makes it really easy for you to, again, take your code, but maybe it's just your prompts or whatever. And as you iterate through those different versions of it, GitHub will help keep track. So if things get off track, go off the rails with whatever you're doing, you can always easily roll it back and just makes it very easy to document those changes as you go along. And although you might not be doing a lot of uh, collaborating, it's really good for collaboration on code. So you can invite collaborators to whatever your code is, who might know more than you, especially in the beginning here. And they help and put changes in there for you. And then you can just merge and, and put those changes in so that your code does what you want it to do. So I'm hoping I gave you enough time to sign up in here. Uh, let's head over to what GitHub actually looks like. And we'll start talking through how to navigate it. This is where the magic happens in GitHub. Uh, you'll come to a page like this and you're probably looking at it and already feeling a bit overwhelmed. That's okay. I was too. And I'm still a noob at a lot of this stuff. So we're going to try to walk through it as best we can. So the first thing or really the only thing you're going to need to begin with when you're starting out uh, writing stuff is this right here. There's multiple ways to get to this. You might even be able to go up here, create new... Yeah, you can create a new repository here if you want. But where you're holding the code or your prompts or whatever is something called a repository. So we're going to head over to here and we're just going to call something test prompt. And we'll make it private for now just because it's not going to be anything. But if you want to share this with the world, you want to sit this to public. If you want it to be private, you make it private. So let's create a new repository. Okay, you're gonna see something like this when you start your new repository. And again, you're probably gonna be like, what do I do here? <laughs> There's all this weird Git stuff, whatever. I don't really know what's going on. There's all these buttons to press. Uh, I feel yeah, I was like, I don't know what I wanna do here. But first, let's just start off with talking about the tabs up here. So for the, the most part, you're not really gonna be using these middle tabs. Uh, if you're doing stuff more publicly, you'll be going into issues just because you or someone else will be posting issues with your code or your prompt or whatever. We're not really going to be dealing in pull requests. We'll be talking about some of this other stuff later. Uh, but the other thing I just want to point out is settings. Here, one of the main or two of the main things that you're probably going to be doing is if you need to change the name of your repository, you can do it right here. And then if you need to delete it or whatever, you can come down here. Also, if you want, you can always add collaborators. So if we go to collaborators, it's going to ask me to sign in because it's super, uh, super security prone. But we're not going to actually do that right now. But you'll just find your friend or whomever who's going to help you out. And you're just going to add their GitHub name uh, to the repo that you're using. Uh, so they have access and they can have control. And you can set that permissions as well. But in the start here, you're probably not going to be collaborating too much because you're just going to figuring stuff out. So... We're going to skip that for now. Let's head back to the code. And again, we're a little overwhelmed here. I don't really know what to press. 
I don't know who makes these UIs, but we're going to forgive them because uh, of all the amazing things we're going to do with it. So the first thing typically what you're going to want to do is just create a new file. You might have some files on your computer and that's okay too. You can upload them from there. But we're going to go to create new file. And this is where you're going to put your code or your prompt or whatever. Now, if you haven't already gotten into uh, Markdown, first of all, what are you doing? Learn Markdown is not that hard. We'll go over a little bit more here, but it's really important to have Markdown in your arsenal of things you can do because GitHub operates on Markdown. So you'll see here, I have no text editing options. I can't really bold things. I can't really underline things. Can't really do anything in terms of formatting. And that's because everything's in Markdown. So for those of you uh, who, just to give a, a quick uh, reminder, we can do headings in Markdown with these hashes. So if I do hash heading, this is going to show up on the other end. We don't see it quite yet as a, a heading. You can do bolds by doing two uh, asterisks, bolds. You can do italics with just one. Uh, and those are really the most you're going to need. The last one I'll say is if you have links, go link in there. And that's the part that's going to look like it's hyperlinked. And then you put in parentheses www.synapticlabs.ai. Uh, and we'll put that in the end parentheses. And on the other end, this is going to show up as a hyperlink where if you click link, it'll send you to Synaptic Labs. This is where we're going to put our, our code or prompt, whatever. So let's just act as a clown and make terrible dad jokes and we will name this uh, dad jokes <laughs> so one thing we want to uh, pay attention to here, to here is if you just do dad jokes or whatever you name it it's just going to come out like that but you can put a type of file at the end here so you know how on your if you save something you might get a dot x or a dot ppt or a dot png whatever it might be so any sort of text thing you can put the end here as well as any code okay so for now because we love markdown so much we're going to do dot md and you'll see that now this is going to save as actually a dot md file if i remove the second period here and then we're going to go to commit changes well, bam and this is what i was talking about in terms of the versioning control I know it's easy to be lazy here and not actually put anything, but you'll thank me later. Take, even if it's two seconds, three words, whatever it is, put something here. So first creation of the dad joke prompt. And you can change this up here too. So we're going to commit changes. And there we go. This is now showing up in the repo. So this is the only thing in the repo, but now when we come back here, you'll see we no longer have that confusing stuff. I don't know what to press. Help me. We actually have the repo started. So here we go. And the dad jokes is right, right here. And it says the last thing that I did here, the last commit. We'll get into all that kind of stuff uh, in the next video. And then if I click into it, it's just going to bring up the dad jokes. And you'll see here, it has it right there. And then let's add some formatting to this, just so you can see what it looks like. So we'll do, I always do mission for my prompts. And then we'll do two headings, a trait, you're funny, but in a dad sort of way. Uh, and then we might want to say something like in bold, uh, be funny. Okay. Um, so we'll go back to commit changes. And again, you'll see here it says update dad jokes.md. We want to add a little bit of a description here. So added the traits and be funny in formatting. Commit changes. And you'll see here, now we have, it's put in the headings and it has be funny and bold. So the last thing I'm gonna say before we wrap up this uh, video on just getting started is that typically a repo is going to have a readme file, which is what it's asking you to do here. A readme file is like the instructions manual for whatever you're doing. Uh, there's a way to do this. I'm actually going to put a, a GPT prompt of a friend uh, in this video to help you create readmes if you want, uh, David Youngblood. And the idea here is that you want to be as clear as possible about how to use the thing that you're using. 
This is another one that everyone skips out on. People have terrible read means. In fact, you've probably, if you're using this video, have gone on GitHub and looked through it and been like, this is a different language. Like, why can't you just speak English or whatever? Again, I want to really, really bring home the idea that in your repos, spend time on the readme. Even if you think that you're being obvious, you want to be even more obvious and walk people through, at least if you're trying to share this with other people. Obviously, if this is just for you, it's private. You can do the bare minimum in terms of what do I need to know to remember how to use this thing? But really, you want to see this as the instructions manual, especially you'll thank yourself later because you might make something and then forget about it or go on to something else and need to create something else. It might be a while till you come back to whatever you created and then you're like, God, how did I use this? I don't remember. Why didn't I create a readme file? So take the time. It's definitely worth it to be super clear in your readme, especially now that we have large language models and they can help you build uh, that readme file in a lot more detail. So if we just go to add to readme, and you'll see here it creates the readme.md. And again, just like what I showed you before, you're going to put this in markdown. You're going to have a great time and you'll remember how to use the thing that you're creating. So that's it for this first video. Sign in. You're going to have to set up tons of security. It's actually a pain in the ass, but it makes sense because obviously you don't want people stealing your code. Make your first repo, even if it is as simple as just sticking your favorite prompt in there. Create the readme, commit those changes, add some description, and you'll be well on your journey to get started. So thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video where we're going to cover the different kind of things you can do. And let's get it done. Thanks, chatters.